Welcome to the FSHD Society Radio Show as we are continuing our celebration and acknowledgement of World FSHD Day today. And we have reached throughout the globe, kind of getting perspectives and different people to kind of join us. Uh, we talked to a lot of people from the States, talking to a lot of people in Canada. And we also have a representative here from the UK. Uh, we call her Raj, as I do enjoy her name and her accent. I'm so glad that she could join us today. Welcome, Raj. Introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and, and, and where are you in the world? Um, yeah. Hi, Tim. Thanks very much for yeah. inviting me. Um, I'm honored to be um, representing FSHD UK, but also myself as a patient. I have FSHD. Um, I'm in London, United Kingdom. Very nice. London, England. Yes. Very nice. I like how you say that. London, England. It sounds so <laughs> crisp. Yeah, I know. We were talking about that before we hit record, right? All the different accents people have. But thank you for representing the UK. What is, what is your role there in regards to you know, FSHD? So um, I was diagnosed in 2016. And since then, I've been trying to find a way to make a difference with what's happening with FSHD. Um, and about two years ago, I finally put pen to paper, wrote up a one pager on what I thought we should do as a strategic group. And uh, I've been very, very fortunate. We now have uh, 30 in our team, six sites, um, patients, clinicians, uh, research scientists, the FSHD Society, uh, MD UK, the registry from the UK. So okay. we have a wonderful group and that's our our remit right. is to get clinical trial ready. Very good. That's, a, well that, that's kind of a big goal. I like how you slipped that in there and said, trying to get clinical trial ready. That's a big yes. undertaking, right? I mean, are you becoming the you know, FSHD group in the UK right now? I think we are. We have, um, we have an organization called MD UK, and they look after multiple um, mm -hmm. types of muscular dystrophies. Um, but there isn't really a specific FSHD strategic group. There is an FSHD support group who are very good at um, looking after the day-to-day -day needs. So if you need a wheelchair or you might need to talk about how to navigate your way through the national health service that we have, then we have that group. And Liz, who is on our team, is excellent at that. But what we didn't have is somebody that was looking at uh, things a bit more strategically and holistically. And that's what FSHD UK has really picked up, I would say. Nice. And in, and in the States, you know, might be becoming more known what FSHD is. Um, but in the UK, I guess the question is, what do you wish more people knew about FSHD? It's a really good question. Um, I think um, I myself didn't know what FSHD was till I found out. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's, well, we, I think it's a rare disease. I think hopefully most of, um, most of our community will know that. But it manifests itself in such a different way. I think it's the third, or I think I read somewhere, it's also the second most prevalent of the muscular dystrophies. But what's, um, what's interesting is that I think A, it's difficult to diagnose because of the way it is. It's you know, asymmetric, it could be any particular part of your body, et cetera. And I think what I'd like people to understand is um, that you know, as a, uh, it, it doesn't uh, pick by gender, race, age, or specific, you know, any kind of specific um, uh, rationale behind it other than obviously we know the cause of it but what people don't understand is kind of the what the person who actually is diagnosed with it feels which is could be pain fatigue uh, a loss of muscle and all of those uh, impact them in many ways and I think that when you look at a person with FSHD somebody uh, as we know one out of five people can be in a wheelchair but also other people so show nothing but they could be feeling pain, muscle pain, fatigue, etc. So I think it would be good for people to understand that whilst the muscular dystrophies are very different for the individual, it's a big life changing moment in lots of ways. Um, you know, the way you can perhaps walk to get a pint of milk down the road, you can't sometimes and right. you used to be able to do that two years ago. So all those things make a difference to your day to day life. And that's what people need to understand with muscular dystrophy. And, and if it's usually particularly because it it's very slow progressing, as we know, and it can affect, as I said, and at any age. So, we, we, you know, you can't judge. Right. Yes. And it can be a little bit, um, like you mentioned, difficult to diagnose, but even difficult to pick up. You know, people understanding why some walk a certain way or can't lift certain things. Or um, there's been many times where I've been in a store and I looked able bodied, and this person's like, Can you help me lift this heavy item off a shelf? And I'm like, uh, No. 
<laughs> you know, and then you're like, I'm being rude a little bit, but I'm like, well, I'm like, we're going to what? Go into this big explanation of why? Well, no, I usually try to help them, of course, anyway, but um, it is tough to even kind of pick up, right? By someone that doesn't know. So awareness is, is really key. So do you believe then, you know, raising awareness and understanding about FSHD is of course important, but, but more importantly, why do you think it's so important? I think, I think, there are so many areas here that you could cover. Um, I think for patients in particular, um, I don't know how it is in the US, but diagnosis, I mean, it took me four years to get diagnosed. So for, and I think the, I think the latest survey showed something between four and seven years for people to be diagnosed, which is terrible. And I think, I think when you don't know the symptoms, and this is what I was saying that I think that because not all the muscles in that particular group are affected, this is what I was sort of reading, is that I think it's difficult for doctors to diagnose. So for, for example, our GPs, which is our general practitioner, um, they don't always know that it's FSHD. Patients don't always know. I, I had no idea that this was FSHD, even though an uncle had mentioned it a few years back. Mm. I didn't associate my, my, I kept falling over. I did not associate that with what my uncle had. Mm. And I think for patients to be aware um, early on, is important uh, mainly because I think you can use certain techniques and tools to manage it in a way. You've also got a chance to then understand why you're falling over or why you can't lift this thing or why suddenly you could do one thing one day but not the other. So for me from a patient's perspective, but again from clinicians and the medical professional, I think that the better we can educate and make those teams aware, the faster the diagnosis and the greater speed at which we can get patients and clinicians working together to come to if it's clinical trials or if it's uh, interventions to do with physiotherapy or orthopedics etc so you believe then that 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 because of lack of education that that of course is a problem getting more people diagnosed so then do you believe there's probably more people that have fshd that don't know it oh i think i'm absolutely sure every person will say this um i think in in every family there must be more than the ones that have been diagnosed yeah you, you you know there must be i know in my own family not everybody's either registered or is is fully aware that this is fshd uh, even though i'm already you know um mm -hmm. leading the way here in terms of trying to yeah. get people to be aware but it's it, it i think i think even myself as i said i knew that an uncle of mine had this uh many years ago but I didn't associate his symptoms with my symptoms. That's how difficult it is. Mm. So I think the greater the awareness, the more we can understand that actually it doesn't just show in one, one way, it can present itself in so many ways. And if you can connect the dots and yeah. make that, make that uh, equation balanced, then that's, that's, that's what we need to make people, but patient clinicians, um, therapists, et cetera, understand that. So there's a lot happening in the FSHD research right now. We have, um, you know, a lot of promising things on the horizon. Um, but what do you think is is maybe the most promising, yet also the most challenging for this community? And and kind of speak, you know, to your UK part of the world. I mean, I think that um, the timing in terms of when we set up FSHD UK was just perfect. You know, we've just about got clinical trials really taking off now with multiple players um on that on that journey and um our, our uh, role as fshd uk was literally to be clinical trial ready and become the coordinating group in uh, for fshd in the uk and i think we've really started well we've definitely got the first one underway we have two clinical trials underway now at two sites um, and the other thing is that um, we're definitely starting to become the coordinated group because people are now coming to us to either share about studies or talk about studies um, and bring them to our table. So I think that's really exciting as well. Um, one of the biggest um, uh, challenges, I guess, is to be clinical trial ready, because it's not just a press the button and it happens. You know, you have to mobilize the patients, you have to get the sites ready, you have to have pharmaceuticals. And um, one of the most exciting things for me, I mean, those are the challenges that we would have to, you know, make sure that everybody's working together. Uh, and I think up until now, perhaps it's been quite um, uh, vertical, perhaps, you know, patients are patients, clinicians are clinicians, pharmaceuticals are pharmaceuticals. But what I'm seeing now, and certainly in the UK, we've set up this kind of multi-stakeholder group 
we're now seeing that at a global level with some of the work that Mark and Ken are doing around Project Mercury, and that is a global initiative to try and get clinical trial ready across not just one country, but across many. And it's a very exciting, can do, um, should do, must do. You know, it's one of those um, initiatives. And I think that that's definitely going to take us to a good place with FSHD. Yeah, that when you bring up the Project Mercury, that's kind of a, a new push um, coming on the horizon here. Um, that's, that's pretty impactful. What, what, was, what was that initial conversations kind of tying your UK community within that? I think the work that we've done over the last two years, you know, we've gone, we've gone from um, very little FSH, and we've got, init- we've got um, uh, amazing clinicians and we've got the NHS services, et cetera. So it's not as if the UK didn't have the, um, the will to, uh, well, I probably the will is not the right word, but the, the group to actually take that forward. I think that's what FSHD UK has filled that role. It's created a strategic multi-stakeholder group, as I said, patients, clinicians, research scientists, etc. And that taken at a global level is what uh, I think helped us to A, be on that table, but B, it's also the similar kind of a, um, a multi-stakeholder group mobilized together to aim towards this goal of getting clinical trial ready for FSHD across many countries, not just one. You mentioned the word goal there, right? Uh, yes. And as your group is in its early stages, maybe, right? You're just yes. starting this off, such such a great start you've had. And I know World FSHD is maybe in something that you don't have this big party planned or something or, or lights going off and whatnot. So let's kind of more target about the future. You know, what what is the next between now and the next June 20th look like for your UK group um, and getting more awareness out and so forth? So we have um, last, in fact, taking the chapter idea from Orlando last year, actually, uh, we started something called a patient engagement at site. So the six sites that we have, we have a reach of about just under 800 people. And in the, on the UK registry, we have 950. So we've got a pretty good reach of patients mm-hmm. uh, with the sites that we have. So we started with, this, with one of our sites. And the idea is that each of those sites would have um, patient engagement days during the course of this next year. And then connecting them all up on June the 20th in 2024. So that's the ambition. Uh, and that's certainly what we're playing to. So we've, we're starting to get each of the sites mobilized. Uh, one of our sites is already doing a patient awareness day this June 20th. Mm-hmm. But it's a separate initiative with the therapist. But the other one is more, much a wider educational about FSHD UK, about the clinical trials that are coming will be coming as well in the future, as well as uh, updating people on our role in Project Mercury as well. So that's the, mm. I, that's the idea. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's all I got for you, Raj. I mean, you, did, you just blew this out of the water, helping us uh, recognize this day, seeing what our goals are globally, uh, doing that very well for us. So glad that you're aboard in this fight and uh, you, can really, you can really sense your passion of where you want to put your energy into this. Glad you're on our side. Glad you're on our team. This is thanks, Tim. It's been a pleasure. Excellent. Thanks, Raj. You take care. Thank you so much.